course. So now that we have gone over ratios, what they are, how they work, what we do with them, let's take a look at proportions. Your ratios with a twist. So brief review, what is a ratio from last time? Remember, these are two unrelated things that we're comparing using numbers. Remember that they're not fractions, but we can write them like fractions. We can treat them like fractions. We can treat them like fractions in that we can reduce ratios. If you have a ratio of say 21 to 28, we could reduce that. Those will both divide by seven and we get a smaller ratio of three to four. They're not ratios though, in that we don't have any mixed numbers. So let's say we had instead 28 to 21 and you reduce that and got four to three. You would keep your answer four to three. You would not write it one and one third. That's not a proper answer for a ratio. So ways that there's some weird ratios, ways that they are different to ratios. Okay, so what about a proportion? What's that? Well, a proportion is just two ratios that are set equal to each other. If you think far, far back to the fractions lecture, these are equivalent fractions. Now, just because I write two fractions and stick an equal sign between the two of them, does that mean that they're actually a proportion? How do we know? If I give you one quarter or one to four equals three to 12, um, how do we know for sure? We know for sure because we should be able to multiply these two corners and they should be equal to each other. If it is a proportion, we should be able to multiply one to 12 and that should be equal to four times three. If you know your times table, you know that one times 12 equals 12, four times three equals 12. Therefore, yes, this is a true proportion. And that's true about all proportions. If you have two fractions um, or ratios set equal to each other and you want to check, you simply multiply the corners. For example, here we have one over five equals three over 10. Is this a proportion? Well, again, let's multiply our corners. One times 10, three times five. So five times three equals one times 10. Five times three is 15. One times 10 is 10. 15 is not equal to 10. So no, this one is not a proportion. This property of proportions that you're able to multiply the two corners together and they come equal is very, very useful and we will see this play out a lot in our talk on proportions. So this is the kind of problem that you're going to be seeing a lot in your homework. Two proportions set equal to each other, but oh no, one of our numbers is missing. We have a letter there instead. The technique that we're going to look at by which we solve for a missing proportion is one that you will use forever. You'll use this a lot in the rest of math class. You'll see this when you start doing dosage conversions in your back office stuff. This is a tool that you want to have available at a moment's notice. It's very, very useful. So make sure you're taking good notes. So here are our two ratios, our proportion, three over x equals 21 over 35. The technique that we use by, with which to solve uh, this problem is called cross multiplying. You may remember this from many, many, many years ago. Um, cross multiplying is a three step process. First step is going to be to multiply our corners and set them equal to each other, basically just like we did when we were checking to see if our two ratios were actually a proportion. So we will multiply our corners, three times 35, x times 21. And set them equal to each other like this. Next step is to finish that multiplication. So we need to multiply very quickly, three times 35, which should give us 105 equals x times 21. This should look familiar. This should look like 
the last homework assignment, the end of the last homework assignment that you had, that was nothing but numbers multiplied together with a missing factor. Our last step is to divide by the number multiplied to the variable. This word variable here, this refers to our missing number. So the X here, that's our variable, our mystery number. So we're going to divide 105, 105 divided by 21, our mystery number. So 21 into 105. Um, and 21 will go into 105 five times. 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, subtracting at 0, so x equals 5. The answer to your division is your missing number. So 3 over 5 equals 21 over 35. And hopefully, if you look closely at this, that should make sense. Um, 3 times 7 is 21, right? and five times seven is 35. So all we have here is an equivalent fraction that we multiplied by seven. Let's look at another example. Here we have 36 over 48 equals three over X. Um, pause the video if you want, try this on your own and then come back and we'll look at it together. So first step is to multiply our corners together. So 36, times x equals 3 times 48. Now we have to finish our multiplication. 48 times 3. Um, well, 8 times 3 is 24. Carry our 2. 3 times 4 is 12. Plus 2 is 14. So 36 times x equals 144. The third step was to divide by the number that's multiplied to the variable. That's this guy here. So we'll do how many times will 36 divide into 144? And 36 will go into 144 four times. 4 times 6 is 24. Carry out 2. 4 times 3 is 12. Plus 2 is 14. Subtract and get 0. So there's our final answer, x equals 4. And again, if we plug that into our problem and take a look there, that should make sense. And if we have our x substituted for 4, 36 times 12, or sorry, 3 times 12 equals 36. I know this is backwards. 4 times 12 equals 48. Or you can say 36 divided by 12 equals 3, and 48 divided by 12 equals 4. Now, remember to check your problem. If you get your answer, you're not sure if it's correct, you should be able to plug in your answer and cross multiply and get the same number um, for, for each multiplication problem, like we did at the very beginning of the lecture. So we should be able to do 36 times 4 over here equals 3 times 48. And you should both equal, go ahead and plug them into your calculator. You'll see they both equal 144. So that's how we check this problem to make sure that we did it correctly. And always check your work. Here's another one. This one has fractions in it. Oh, dear heavens. Usually my students get very, very jittery when they start throwing fractions into things like this. Don't think hard about the fractions. The steps are exactly the same. You just also have to remember now everything that we went over in the fractions lecture. So start by multiplying your corners together. Y times one third equals 12 times one half. Um, we can't do Y times one third. So we don't know what y is, but 12 times 1 half, we can put 12 over 1 and multiply that and get 12 times 1 is 12, 2 times 1 is 2. So y times 1 third equals 12 and 12 over 2. Our next step then, remember, is to divide by the variable, divide by whatever number is multiplied to y. 
So we'll have 12 over 2 divided by 1 third. And hopefully you remember from the Fractions Part 2 lecture your copy dot flop. You thought you'd never see that again. So 12 over 2 times 3 over 1. 12 times 3 is 36. 2 times 1 is 2. Um, and then we can reduce this. We can divide this top and bottom by 2. 36 over 2. Thirty-six divided by 2 is 18, 12 divided by 12 is 1, or just simply 18 as the bottom of our ratio. As always, you should be able to plug this into your calculator, um, or in this case, do it by hand and get the correct answer. So we should have 1 half times 12 equals one-third times 18. Write your whole numbers as fractions with a one underneath. 12 times 2 is, or 12 times 1 half is 12 over 2. One-third times 18 is 18 over 3. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 18 divided by 3 is 6. So yes, they are proportional. How about another one with fractions? Try this on your own. Pause the video, go through it step by step. Don't think hard about the fractions. Right? Think about all of the rules that we've gone over in the last you know, couple of weeks. And try this on your own, and then start the video up and we'll do it together. So here we have 2 thirds over y equals 1 third over 5. Again, we're going to multiply our corners together. First step, always write out your steps. Don't ever do anything in your head. You've got enough that you're trying to keep in there. So 2 thirds times 5 equals y times 1 third. Make sure you write your 5 over 1. And then 2 thirds times 5 over 1. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 1 is 3. So we have 10 thirds equals y times 1 third. Next step is to divide. And remember, we always divide by the number that's multiplied to the variable. So we'll have 10 over 3 divided by one third. Do your copy dot flop. So that will give us 10 thirds times three over one. 10 times three is 30. Three times one is three. 30 over three. And we can reduce 30 over three to 10 over one or just 10 as the second number in our ratio. If you got it right, go ahead and go one step further and write everything out and double check your work. Um, plug one third times 10, set that equal to two thirds times five. See if you are still correct. Okay, now instead of fractions, we got a decimal there. We have that 0 0.75. Well, hopefully you know that 0 0.75 is the same as 3 fourths. If you don't know that, you, you should. Now you do. So we can just rewrite this 0 0.75 as y over 16 equals 3 over 4. And then we can cross multiply and solve for a missing variable. And this, I think, would be the ideal way to do this. It makes it very, very simple. And you don't have to worry about multiplying or dividing with decimals. So we'll have 16 times 3 equals y times 4. Do 16 times 3. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry your 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Plus 1 is 4. So 48 equals y times 4. Last step, divide by the number multiplied to your variable, which will give us 48 divided by 4. And 48 divided by 4, hopefully you know this from your times tables practice, is 12. So y equals 12. 
And again, if we were to plug this into our problem, you would hopefully see that connection um, very quickly. If we stuck our 12 in here, because 12 times, or uh, 12 divided by 4 equals 3, and 16 divided by 4 equals 4. So we took our 12 sixteenths, we divided it by 4 to get an equivalent ratio of 3 fourths. Another one with some decimals in it. Again, don't think too hard about scary numbers. Trust in the steps. Trust that you know what you've been taking good notes on. So multiply your corners. X times 0 0.4 equals 1.2 times 1. Um, X times 0 0.4 is going to stay the same, obviously, because we can't multiply by X. 1.2 times 1 is 1.2. And now, of course, we divide by the number multiplied to the variable. So 1.2 divided by 0.4, 1 and 2 tenths divided by 4 tenths, which will give us our 4 tenths on the outside, 1 and 2 tenths on the inside. And now remember way back from the decimals lecture, because we have that decimal in our divisor, we have to move it over to the right to make our divisor a whole number. And remember that whatever we do to the divisor, we have to do to the dividend as well. That's also going to move over to the right. So now instead of 4 tenths into 1 and 2 tenths, we have 4 into 12. And 4 goes into 12 3 times. 3 times 4 is 12. Subtract and get 0. And we're done. x equals 3. Okay, let's look at some more practical examples of this. I told you that this is a, a skill, a tool that you will always want to have at the, at the ready. Um, let's see why that might be so. So for every 12 patients on the floor, you need four nurses. That's your company policy. Um, today, for whatever reason, you got 60 patients. I don't know, something bad happened. Um, how many nurses are you going to need? How many nurses do you need to go get out of the break room and call them, wake them up in the middle of the night to come in? So for every 12 patients on the floor, you need four nurses. We can write that as a ratio. We could write that 12 patients to four nurses. And today you've got 60 patients. How many nurses are you going to need? We can write that as an equivalent ratio, 60 patients, and we don't know how many nurses. That's what we're trying to find out. Now, hopefully you notice right away that I'm keeping my labels together. Patients are both on top, right? And nurses, both on the bottom of our fraction. It doesn't matter how you write this. I could have written this um, four nurses over 12 patients equals variable over 60. Either of these would be okay. What matters is that your two labels are on the same edge, on, on the same top or bottom. Like, don't switch them up. Okay, so 60 patients, how many nurses are we going to need to call in tonight? Well, we can cross and multiply and find out. So 60 times 4 equals 12 times, we don't know how many. 60 times 4, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 6 is 24, so that'll give us 240 equals 12 times our mystery number, our variable. Divide 240 by the number multiplied to the variable, always. So we'll get 12 goes into 240. 12 goes into 24 twice. 2 times 12 is 24. Subtract and get 0. Bring down our 0. 12 goes into 0 0 times. 0 times 12 is 0. So there we go. You have 60 patients. You're going to need to call in 20 nurses to handle the madness. You probably remember this guy from the last lecture, um, lorazepam, Ativan. You probably want some after that night. 
So our label for our lorazepam is two milligrams per milliliter. For every one milliliter of medication that you draw up, you're giving your patient two milligrams of the actual drug. Your patient needs five milligrams. They're also having a bad night. And the doctor says, give them five megs of lorazepam and then walks away and leaves you to your fate. How many milliliters are you going to give to your patient? Well, this label, this two megs per mil, that's just a ratio, two milligrams to one milliliter, two unrelated things using numbers. We know that our patient needs five milligrams, so let's write a proportion with five milligrams on top. Um, again, make sure that you're keeping like labels together. And then here's our variable. We don't know how many milliliters we're giving our patient. This is why we're doing the math. Nobody wants to overdose their patient. So cross multiply, we'll have five times one equals X times two. Five times one is five. And then divide by the number that's multiplied to your variable. So five divided by two. Two will go into five twice, and two times two will give us four. Subtract and get one. And then because we don't have any numbers over here to bring down, we're going to add a decimal and a zero. Think back to your decimals lecture. Bring that decimal straight up into our answer. Bring our zero straight down. And how many times does two go into 10? Well, it goes in five times. Five times two is 10. Subtract and get zero and you're done. So our patient who needs five migs of Ativan, five migs of lorazepam, is gonna get two and a half milliliters. You'll probably feel much better after that. This is remdesivir. Um, it's a fairly generic broad spectrum antiviral medication. Um, it's being used right now pretty successfully, it looks like, too, in a lot of uh, treatment of COVID-19. Um, remdesivir was originally developed for a number of different antiviral uses, all of which proved to be kind of unimpressive. So it's nice that they finally found a use for it. Your label for remdesivir is usually 100 mg per 5 milliliters. Um, let's say your patient is in the ICU, you're trying to keep them from having to go on a ventilator, and your patient needs 350 milligrams of remdesivir. So the nurse tells you that, and then she leaves you to your fate. How many mils are you going to draw up and give to your patient? This is where I, I said um, this technique will be very, very useful. This is where it's useful. We use cross multiplication the most when we're doing dosage conversions. So 100 mg per 5 milliliters, we can write that as a ratio, right? That is a ratio, 100 milligrams to 5 milliliters. And then remember, we want to keep labels together. So if milligrams are on top, they stay on top. If milliliters are on the bottom, they stay on the bottom. Your patient needs 350 milligrams. How many milliliters are you going to give them? We'll start by cross multiplying. So 350 times five equals 100 times our mystery variable. 350 times five, five times zero is zero, five times five is 25, carry our two, five times three is 15, 15 plus two is 17. So we get 1750 equals 100 times our, our variable, our mystery number. So that's step two of our cross multiplication. Step three is divide. Divide by the number multiplied to the variable. So we'll have 1750 divided by 100. So how many times will 100 go into 1750? Well, 100 will go into 175 once, and we'll get 100. Subtract that and get 75. Bring down our zero and get 750. 100 will go into 757 times to give us 700. Subtract and get 50. 
And then there's nothing out here to bring down, so we need to add a decimal, bring it up into your answer, and a zero that will come down here next to our 50. Now we have 100 into 500. Then 100 will go into 500 five times. To give us 500, 500 minus 500 is zero. So there's our final answer. Your patient is going to get 17.5 milliliters of remdesivir. Best of luck to them. Now, of course, always plug this in and double check your cross multiplication. Right, 100 times 17.5 should be the same as 5 times 350 if it's not something went wrong. Let's look at another example. Um, you probably remember this from the last lecture too, that's dexamethasone. Um, pretty good broad spectrum anti uh, steroidal medication that has also shown some good promise um, in treating patients with COVID. So DEXA, uh, for every, every tablet has two milligrams of the actual medication within it. Uh, your patient's doing better. The remdesivir worked. He's still in the ICU, but you didn't have to put him on a ventilator. Everybody's happy, especially him. Uh, but now you're treating him with DEXA to help with the um, cytokine storm that he's going through. Your patient needs seven and a half migs of this dexamethasone. Um, how many tablets are you going to give him? The nurse is very happy with you. She says, here, go dose him. You did so well on the last job. So our DEXA label is two migs to one tablet. Writing in your labels is particularly important here so that you don't accidentally flip something around. Um, what's our equivalent fraction? Well, our patient needs seven and a half migs. We don't know how many tablets. So we'll go ahead and cross multiply. 7.5 times one equals two times our mystery number, our variable. 7.5 times 1 is 7.5 equals 2. Next step is to divide by the number that's multiplied to your variable. So we'll have 7.5 divided by 2. So how many times will 2 go into 7 and a half? Well, 2 will go into 7 three times. 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract that and get 1. <clears throat> Bring your decimal up into your answer and bring that five down. And then two goes into 15 seven times. Seven times two is 14. Subtract that and get one. Let's add a zero here since there's no other numbers to bring down. And bring that zero down. Two goes into 10 five times. Five times two is 10. Subtract and get zero. So our patient needs seven or 3.75 or three and three quarters of a dexamethasone tablet. You could write it 3.75, you could write it 3 and 3 fourths. Either one would be acceptable. Now, it is true when you get to your externship sites, when you actually do real dosage conversion, usually you will have some computer program or formula sitting in front of you where you plug your numbers in and it spits out an answer for you very, very quickly. And that's wonderful and nice and can help reduce error. Um, but who knows, someday, I don't know, the electricity might go out in your hospital, the zombie apocalypse might hit, you might be too busy to program stuff into the computer because you're dealing with a lot of folks who got shot at a movie theater. Um, and you may have to be doing this on your own. Um, by hand. So it's a very, very good technique to be able to use. Um, and also it's convenient for finding out other things as well. So this is all your homework uh, for today. We'll be solving for missing numbers in proportions. Um, as always, if you have questions or would like me to go over some of the homework with you or check an answer with you um, or prep for the quiz tomorrow, Send me an email or drop by office hours and I'd be happy to see you.